The 50,000 mile Royal Tour of the Commonwealth reached its final stages on the 10th of May 1954 when Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, together with their two children, Prince Charles and Princess Anne, arrived at Gibraltar. Gibraltar, the rock that has been British sovereign territory for nearly 300 years. As the sun burned its way through the morning mist, the Royal Convoy turned Europa Point and the Royal Yacht Britannia could soon be seen in the bay. At precisely nine o'clock, Britannia entered the harbour between the north and detached moles to the sound of a royal salute from the guns of the fortress of Gibraltar. Here at King's Bastion, the guns were manned by a detachment of 28 Coast Regiment Royal Artillery. As the Royal Yacht approached Tower Wharf, the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh could be seen on the Admiral's Bridge of Britannia. And on the after deck, the Royal Children, Prince Charles and Princess Anne, waving to the many eager spectators ashore. The Mini Royals seemed to take great interest in the mass of press photographers who were recording the historic event. On the quay side, His Excellency the Governor, General Sir Gordon Macmillan, waited for the gangway to be placed in position, and then he went on board to greet the Queen. The flag officer of the Royal Yacht is kept busy in the meantime, answering many questions from Princess Anne. His Excellency came ashore and all was ready for Her Majesty and the Duke of Edinburgh to be received with due ceremony. Then the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh came down the gangway to the music of the Royal Marine Band from HMS Glasgow, which continued to play as the Queen inspected the Guard of Honour of the three services, the Royal Navy, the Army and the Royal Air Force. Then the Queen and the Duke left the dockyard for a brief stop at Ragged Staff, where Her Majesty opened and named Gibraltar's newest highway, Queensway. And at North Front we see many of the thousands of people, the people of Gibraltar, who eagerly awaited the arrival of the royal visitors. As the royal car swept in, the royal standard was broken, and after several presentations, the Queen and Duke drove round the airfield and inspected the units paraded there. Inspection over, the royal car drove back to the dais, and there, several officers of the Army and Royal Air Force were presented to Her Majesty the Queen and Prince Philip. So to the march past, under the command of Brigadier Matthews, command of Royal Artillery. It was headed by a detachment of the Royal Navy from HMS Duchess. All the various Army units serving on the rock were represented in the march past. Fine body of men and women in winter order, of course it's May. In the airfield as we know, temperatures can drop very rapidly if a northerly comes in. Standards battle colours flying. Row upon row of the army men representing their various regiments in Gibraltar march past Her Majesty the Queen. Now the Air Force. And to conclude, a troop of 25 pounder field guns and a troop of light anti-aircraft guns of the Royal Artillery. Guns of the Royal Artillery fired a royal salute and the Queen and Duke drove up to Princess Caroline's battery and here, Her Majesty used her own cine camera to take a shot of this very same scene. In 
driving along Queen's Road, the Queen and Duke visited Remy Chambers and then on through the Rock Tunnel to the Calpe Power Station and the Waterworks. The Royal Visitors then drove down to Governor's Parade and into Town Range, where many people were waiting to see them. Cheers of the throngs as they drove through. After a brief stopover at the convent, the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh drove to the assembly rooms where they were entertained to lunch by the Legislative Council and the City Council of Gibraltar. Again, vast crowds gathered to see the royal couple and Her Majesty and they were greeted by the Colonial Secretary and the Chairman of the Council. After lunch, the Queen and Duke made their way to the Alameda Gardens and then on to Victoria Stadium where many thousands of school children eagerly awaited their arrival. The Queen inspected the Guard of Honour, the British Legion, and then drove around the stadium to the cheering and hand-clapping of the many children. There they are, with their cotton flags, as opposed to the plastic ones we've seen this year. Then many of Gibraltar's leading dignitaries were presented to Her Majesty, His Lordship the Bishop, led the members of the Board of Education, which included the education officers of the three services. Ingram, director of the Cowper Institute, shook hands with the Queen and Duke, and then came Mr. Prescott, president of the Gibraltar Football Association. Members of the religious denominations in Gibraltar, a very pretty young lady holding onto her hat. Majesty then graciously presented the Queen Elizabeth Cup to the Sportsman of the Year on behalf of the Gibraltar Britannia Club. There's the dais and, yes, more presentations. I can imagine the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh's hands are quite sore after that. Her Majesty then mounted the dais where she was presented with a bouquet of flowers by a small girl representing all the children of Gibraltar. To a girl tumbling a little into the flower pots. The events at the Victoria Stadium concluded with a display of dancing by the children and the Queen, accompanied by the Duke of Edinburgh, drove to the Royal Gibraltar Yacht Club. There the Queen was met by Mr P.G. Russo, the Commodore, who then presented the officers and committee of the Yacht Club to Her Majesty. faces of those we still remember today. It was at the Yacht Club that the Queen and Duke were entertained to tea and were able to rest for a short while between the many engagements on their first day in Gibraltar. Police Commissioner ever watchful. Then on to Main Street where we see some of the many people who were waiting for an all too brief glimpse of the Queen and Duke as they drove from the Yacht Club to the convent for a short visit during which Her Majesty went into King's Chapel and saw the beautiful stained glass window which had been erected there in honour of the memory of the Queen's father, the late King George VI. Also at the convent at this time were the royal children, Prince Charles and Princess Anne. They'd been to see the apes and here we catch a brief glimpse of them playing in the garden of the convent before driving back with their mother and father to the royal yacht. Many presents given to the royal family by the people of Gibraltar, one of the most interesting was this beautiful doll's house given to Princess Anne. You can see it as it was displayed at the Calpe Institute a few days previously. On the second day of the royal visit, the Queen and Duke drove to the Upper Rock. Here at St Michael's Cave, you see the royal car, the door was opened for Her Majesty to alight by Master Gunner Barrett of the Royal Artillery. In the background, hovering the ever-vigilant Commissioner of Police.
Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh come forward to be greeted by the Commanding Officer of 28th Coast Regiment Royal Artillery and by the District Officer Major James. After the cave visit, the Queen and Duke went down to the Queen's Gate to see the apes. Quite a number of them were available for royal inspection and obvious amusement. And the popular ape-keeper, Gunnar Portlock, received his reward by being presented to Her Majesty the Queen. At the Colonial Hospital, the Queen and Duke were met by the Colonial Secretary and the Chief Medical Officer, Dr Edmondson, who then presented the doctors and matrons of the Colonial and King George V hospitals to Her Majesty. Queen inspected a guard of honour made up of sisters and nurses of the two hospitals and was then invited to lay the foundation stone of the King George VI Memorial Hospital for Children. Stone well and truly laid ceremony now signs the visitor's book of the Colonial Hospital, and to the applause of many spectators, Her Majesty waved to the children on the balconies above. From the Colonial Hospital, the Royal Party drove via Catalan Bay to Europa, and here from a moving car in a few moments, we'll see some of the many people who are waiting to see the Royal Couple being tucked in, kept warm. People of Gibraltar rushing forward to catch a final glimpse before Her Majesty disappeared in the royal car. There they are, all waiting expectantly with the balconies beautifully decorated. After passing Europa Sports Ground, the royal party drove down Europa Road on to Tower Wharf, where the Queen and Duke embarked on the Royal Yacht, accompanied by His Excellency the Governor and Lady Macmillan. <laughs> Majesty the Queen and Prince Philip walking towards the after deck, where Her Majesty held an investiture on board the Britannia. Great honour indeed to be decorated on Her Majesty's private yacht by Her Majesty the Queen herself, without memories flooding back of those who stood proudly to attention as Her Majesty the Queen affixed her own decoration to them. Military and civil presentations. Ceremony over, Her Majesty then went to the stateroom where several officers who had helped so much to make the royal visit the success it was, took leave of the Queen and the Duke. They then proceeded ashore. And the Royal Marines and the crowds on the balcony at the tower, the naval escort, the army.
and the crew of the Britannia tidying up just before she leaves. Many of the civic dignitaries The Commission of Police leaves the Royal Yacht, an impressive file. The MA. And finally Lady Macmillan comes ashore, immediately followed by His Excellency the Governor, General Sir Gordon Macmillan. side to bid them farewell. There's Princess Anne, being whisked off very smartly by one of the crew, as the horses are untied, and the royal yacht prepares to slip away to a royal salute. Her Majesty the Queen waving, the Prince Charles dons a cap, no doubt taken from one of the crew, a salute from His Royal Highness Prince Philip. So the royal yacht takes our royal family away.